Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, folks, uh, I hope you are doing great. Folks, just to give you a recording notice, this uh, lecture is being recorded to share at a later time. So the last time we were discussing about uh, some properties uh, of uh, the random variables, we discussed about the mean and we discussed about the variance and the standard deviation. Now the next uh, that we are going to start today So the next uh, that we are going to start today is the coefficient of uh, variation. Okay. Now, what is the definition of this uh, coefficient of the variation? The coefficient of variation it shows. the variability of data in sample with regards to mean of population okay it is noted as uh, the cv coefficient of uh, variation and mathematically this is the ratio of your sigma and to mu so how does it help us to decide about the data basically so let's say if you have two samples uh, sample a and you have another sample sample b so for example sample a has the cv of 10% and the sample B has a CV of 20%. Uh, so we'll say that because this CV value of sample B is higher, we will say that uh, sample B has, this sample has now B has more variations. relative to its mean okay now if you recall from our last uh, uh, lecture we were solving one example and we figured out uh, some of our values our sigma value was in that example that we were performing 0 0.866 and for the same example our mu value was 1.5 okay so in this case my cv will be 0 0.866 over 1.5 which turns out to be 0 0.547 CV is represented in terms of the percentage, so I can say this is my 54.7%. Okay. Now, another property is the mode. Mode basically is a value of uh, x of n.
for which the largest value of f of x of n occurs okay so basically we will see the largest value of f of n now how do you find it again coming back to the example we were using before if this is our x and this is our f of x of n x of i sorry and this is my 0 1 2 and the 3 and the corresponding values were 1 by 8 3 by 8 3 by 8 and 1 by 8 now here what is the definition says with the largest value of f of x now this is the largest value 3 by 8 and we have another largest value 3 by 8 so in this example particularly we have two modes one and two there are two terms we use here one is called as the multi model and an another is the uni model in the multi model basically we have more than one mode okay whereas in the uni model as the name says it will be only one mode so mode could be more than one in your problem okay now another property is the median now median basically it is a value it is the value of uh, x of n for which the probability of obtaining smaller value smaller value is f 1 by 2 or the probability of obtaining obtaining the larger value is again 1 by 2 or half okay so when we are talking about uh, the smaller value so for this portion we have summation of uh, f of x of i that is equals to 1 by 2 it should be equal to 1 by 2 where i is uh, from 0 to n whereas in terms of the larger value we will define it as uh, the summation of uh, i from n to capital n of f of x of n or x of i sorry is equals to 1 by 2 okay now let's do the example uh, take the example that we were doing before So we know that uh, f of 0 was uh, 1 by 8 and f of 1 was 3 by 8. Okay. 
Now, if I solve this uh, definition, which I just wrote it down, so f of x of i for these two, it will be from 0 to 1. That should be equals to sum of f at 0 plus f of at 1. Now, once uh, I have this value 1 by 8 plus 3 by 8, this turns out to be 1 by 2. So, because I have this uh, 1 by 2 available now, so I will say that uh, this one is the median. Let's check it for the next f of 2 was uh, 3 by 8 whereas f at uh, 3 was uh, 1 by 8 now i apply the same formula here f of uh, x of i now here the i will be from 2 to 3 I sum up f of 2 plus f of 3. When we plug in the values, we get uh, 3 by 8 plus 1 by 8. So we get again 1 by 2. So again, I can say that because I have uh, 1 by 2, this 2 value is the median. 2 is the median. Now, one thing you need to keep in mind they could mod uh, could be it could be many mode. Okay, as I just mentioned, the multi model, but the median is only one always. Median is one only. Now, because in this uh, example we have two median, one and two, what we do, we just take their average. So, for this example, particularly, I would say that my median will be this one plus this two, and I take their average, which is 1.5. So that should be your answer. Okay. Now we will solve one example in which we will uh, again repeat all of these. Let's do an example. It says that a discrete. probability function is given by f of x of n is equals to a n where n value is uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, our objective is first we need to find out what is the value of a in this. The second objective uh, is we need to find out the probability x less than equal to 3 and the third objective is we need to find out the mu value and the last objective is we need to find out the sigma value okay let's do it uh, with the part a so that's your solution 
Now we know the basic definition for our uh, probability functions that sum of uh, f of x of i that should be equals to 1 for all i. Now we know that there are 5 functions up to 5 function. So this will become summation of n from 0 to 5 and this f of x is this one a n. That is equal to 1. So I can say that a times n. Now I will plug in the values for n, and they all should be adding up because I have a submission sign here. So it will be 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, and they all should be equal to 1. So when you solve this, uh, you will get uh, the value of the a as 1 over 15. Okay. Now the second uh, objective is asking to find out the probability when x is uh, less than or equal to 3. So for uh, part b, we need to find out uh, the probability when x is uh, less than or equal to 3. Now up to this point we know that f of x of n is basically a of n. We find out the value of the a which is 1 over 15. So that is your complete f of n, x of n. So the probability that x is less than or equal to 3 that will be equals to, if you remember, we did it uh, in our last lecture, that should be equal to uppercase f at 3. Okay. Now, by definition, I know that uh, this is equals to f of x of n, where it is ranging from 0 to 3. So I have 1 over 15 of n, which is my value of uh, f of x of n, it's here. And i should be ranging from 0 to 3. And it is 1 over 15, 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3. When you solve it, uh, you will find out your answer as 2 by that is your answer for part b if the uh, probability value is less than uh, x is less than or equal to 3. Now let's come to the part c here. In the part c it was asking us to find out the value of mu mean value. As we know that uh, your mu is the product of x of n and f of x of n. Now based on the current uh, given definitions we can say that this is the n and your x of s is the 1 by 15. And n should be ranging from 0 to 5. This 1 by 15 is the constant. I can take it out of the summation. So this is 1 by 15. Summation n is equal to from 0 to 5. And this n should be multiplied by the n. I get my n square here. And now we just uh, plug in the values. It is 1 by 15. Now n is 0. Just make sure you take the square as well. So it is 0 square plus 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square plus 4 square plus 5 square. Okay. And the final answer come, turns out to be 11 by 3. That is your value of the mu.
Now, in terms of uh, sigma, in the part D, he was asking to find out uh, the value of sigma. Now, as you know that uh, the formula for sigma square is is based on x of n square f of x of n now in our situation we have n starting from 0 to 5 and minus the mu square so this is my n square and f of x is the 1 by 15 of n which we just find out in part one of this question and minus the mu is the 11 by 13 11 by 3 sorry okay and here it should be from n 0 to 5 so this is my summation n square can multiply by n i get n cube here over 15 and minus uh, 11 over 3 this one should be n is from 0 to 5 now we just plug in the values here i have 1 over 15 now n is the cube again we need to take the cube now 0 cube plus 1 cube plus up to so on when you take up to the 5 cube and then you subtract the 11 by 3 scale out of this the final answer turns out to be 1.55 this is your value of the sigma scale i want to find uh, my sigma so i just take the scale root of this value and the final answer will be 1.247 that's your final answer. Okay. Now, before I go into the next uh, example, I just want to explain something here. Last time you were doing uh, uh, sigma scare. This x of i square into f of x of i minus mu square. Now, this thing, if you remember by definition, this was equals to the expected value, or I can say it, write it on as e of x square. Okay. So, this uh, equation, I can also write it down as sigma square is equals to e x square minus mu scale now for the mu if you remember uh, this was equals to the product of x of f of x of and i take this mission this is also called the expected value or e of x so i can plug this uh, definition into mu scale e of x square minus uh, now here we need to be very careful because this is the scale of the e of x okay now let's take uh, an example for this Let's take an example for what I did now. For example, if I have x here and I have f of x, find out for this 0, 0 0.4, 1 is uh, 0 0.3, 2 is uh, 0 0.2. 
and the three is 0 0.1. And if I ask you to compute E of X, E of uh, X square, and E of 2 of X plus 1. Now, for the first part here, we have uh, the summation of uh, x of f of x. So, what that will be? You have the x values here and you have f of x, you just multiply them. So, 0 should be multiplied by 0.4 because we have the summation sign here. So, I add up 1 should be multiplied by. 0.3 plus 2 should be multiplied by 0.2 plus the 3 should be multiplied by 0.1. Okay, so when you solve it, uh, you get a value of 1. So that is your E of x. Now, in terms of E x here. The only change that will come out is the when you take a summation, this x should be squared here. Okay. And what you will, you will do here again, x should be squared before it is multiplied by f of x. So I will say 0 squared times 0.4. Plus one square and then multiplied by 0 0.3 plus uh, two square times uh, 0 0.2 plus three square times 0 0.1. So you find out your answer, it will be two. Okay, sorry, this should be square actually. So we have E of uh, x square. Now for this part, it's the same process. You just need to replace your x values with two of x plus one. Okay. Now you need to do this uh, at home and add up one more here. You need to try e of. Uh, You need to try this one at home as well. Okay, these two. So the only thing is here in this one, the x should be replaced by e power minus x. That's it. Now, folks, I hope you have uh, tried to solve examples one to twelve from the textbook which I shared. Now there are some questions uh, again in the chapter. Uh, it's a Douglas book. Uh, Douglas and George book. You need to work on some examples. Uh, uh, you have worked on the example from 1 to 12, which I mentioned last time. For today's practice, you need to work on questions from 15 to 20. These are the questions. Question 23. Try it, uh, question 27 to 30. 33 to 36, question 39 to 41, and 45. Okay, all of these are from chapter 3. These are unsolved uh, questions from this textbook. Okay, now the next we need to start is the continuous uh, random variable. Continuous random variable. Now the continuous uh, random variable is a random variable which can
assume an infinite number of values number of values such as the duration of operational time the strength these are some of the examples of continuous random variable the strength of a material and the stress Now, if you remember uh, in the discrete uh, random variable we were defining a p of uh, x of n that was equals to f of x and we called it as the pmf probability mass function now in case of uh, continuous random variable we just uh, take the limit of this function up to zero so what we do here in the in terms of continuous p of x is equals to n and we develop this function as f of x plus mu minus uh, f of x and we equate it equal to zero and take the limit where the value of your sigma that will approach to zero because if you put zero here it will give you the value of equal to zero now this thing okay this is the equal sign here this thing uh, by definitions provide us f of x is the derivative of d of x with f of x okay now folks in the continuous random variable this thing is what we call as probability density function or you will see me i'm saying all the time pdm pdf now this pdf uh, in the continuous random variable this is just like the same as the pmf this uh, pmf we were discussing for the discrete uh, variable and this pdf is the same but for the continuous uh, random variable now if we integrate it we can find out uh, the value of the capital x which is the cumulative function so it will turns out to be integrating from minus infinity to x and f of x into d of x this is what we called as the cdf C D F for continuous random variable. Okay. Just for you to remind, uh, in terms of the discrete, what we find out uh, in our last lecture, this was the summation probability of x is equals to x i. Where we have i from 0 to n. So, this was the cumulative distributive function for discrete 
random variable. Now, one of the important property in the continuous uh, random variable is if you want to, it allows us to find out the probability between two limits. What does it mean? I will show you now. So if I have x value which is greater than or equal to a and x value less than or equals to b, how do we solve this uh, continuous function? We just integrate uh, its f function, its f function from a to b. Now what is the background behind this? So for example, just like we developed some graph uh, last time. Uh, so if you have uh, any graph like this for f of x, and this is, let's say, the point A, and this is, let's say, the point B. So by integration, if you remember your undergraduate definitions, it provides us the area which is under the curve. Okay, this is the area we are interested to find out. So we integrate it from A to the B. So once you, if you want to find out this, this will be your probability value where X is greater than A and less than B. This is the basic concept behind this. Now, if we have a x value greater than equal to minus infinity to plus infinity then the probability of x between minus infinity to the plus infinity will be 1 so this is just like the same as i said yesterday in our last lecture that the sum of the probabilities will remain 1. In other words, I can write it down as uh, f of uh, x into d of x from minus infinity to plus infinity and this is equals to the 1. This is the basic definition of uh, your cumulative distribution function. Now, in terms of the continuous random variable, the complementary the complementary cumulative distribution distribution. C, C, D. It is defined as. Now, if you remember that for the complement, we just take a bar on the top. That is equals to the probability when your capital X is greater than X. And this is equals to 1 minus P of uh, X of x minus uh, sorry x is less than equals to x and we just uh, figure out how we write down the probabilities here so it will be f of x into d of x and we integrate it from minus infinity to plus infinity that's what the definition of the complementary cumulative distribution. Now, just like we were drawing the bar graph uh, in the discrete random variable, we have in terms of uh, in continuous uh, random variable, the graph will be something like this. Okay, this is my f of x and this is my x. Okay, 
Now, this is also called as the normal distribution. We will study about this when we go to the properties of the distribution. This is the normal distribution. This is also called the bell curve, actually. Okay, now for the cumulative function, that remains the same. So it will be something like uh, this. Okay, where this top uh, should correspond to one, and this is the zero probability, and the graph is between capital or uppercase F, not the small and x. So this is graph for my cumulative distribution function. Okay. Now we will solve one example here. Okay. So the probability density function of the lifetime of an appliance is given by f of uh, t which is equals to 0 0.25 t e power minus 0 0.5 of t this is our f of t whereas the t is uh, greater than 0 and it is less than infinity okay now what are our objective our objectives are we need to find uh, number one. We need to find what is the probability, probability of uh, failure What is the probability of the failure during first year? The second objective is we need to find out what is the probability of appliance lasting at least five years okay so these are two objectives now let's see how we solve them now first thing you need to see either this problem is related to the discrete random variable or the continuous random variable now the word here probability density function it is uh, clearly indicating me this problem is related to the continuous random variable so what will be the solution for this for the part a so it is asking what is the probability of the failure during first year so I know that uh, the probability, what it is asking me, I need to find out less than or equal to one. That should be, because it is the continuous variable, I will be using this formula. And I will be integrating it from zero to one. Now the f of t is basically what we have already in our statement here. In our question, he gave us the value of the f of t. 
So this will turn out to be 0 0.25 t e power minus 0 0.5 of t. And we need to integrate it from 0 to 1. So the probability that uh, of the failure during the first year or I can say this is my F1. Now this is the integration if you remember in your undergraduate I'm not going to repeat how you integrate a formula. You just need to brush up your skill again for integration and differentiation. Once you solve this you will get it uh, 0. Uh, 0.0. 902. Okay. And that is your answer. Okay. Now, in the part B, basically, it is asking us what is the probability of the appliance lasting at least five years. So, what we need to find out, we need to find out the probability that t is greater than or equal to 5 and we just uh, saw some definitions here so this will be equal to basically 1 minus uh, probability of uh, t less than equals to 5. Now if you remember this is the p here. Now this is the definition for f at 5. Okay, so what you need to do, you just need to solve it for f at 5. So it is 1 minus the 0 0.25 t e power minus 0 0.5 t into dt. And because I'm interested for f5, I will integrate it from 0 to 5. Again, when you will solve it uh, using the integration, you will find out your answer as 0 0.2873. Okay. And this is your answer for the first part. This is your answer for the second part. Now, just to give you an idea, in case it was a discrete uh, function instead of uh, the continuous, the only difference was which was in this uh, is we need to replace this with the summation instead of the integral. So what that could be if it is a discrete, let me write down the next one. So if it was a discrete, if it was a discrete way, uh, a problem, discrete random variable. So probability of t greater than equals to 5 1 minus p less t less than 5 and this one by definition again we know that this is 1 minus probability of x is equals to x here we take the summation from time 0 to 4 that's what is in case of discrete but this uh, example over here is clearly for the continuous because of the PDF mentioned here. Okay. Now, as we just uh, look on some of the examples here, I just want to give you a comparison between the properties. Uh, okay. Some of the properties here. Now, in case of uh, discrete uh, random variable, your mu value is summation of x of i. That's the formula for your discrete uh, random variable. Whereas i is equals to from 0 to n. Now, in case of uh, continuous uh, random variable, your mu formula will be integral of x of f of x into d of x. 
and this will be from minus infinity to plus infinity. Now, in terms of sigma square in discrete uh, random variable, the formula for the sigma square is we take the sum of uh, x of i minus uh, mu whole square this is the scale f of x of i which is uh, from 0 to capital n whereas in case of uh, continuous uh, random variable the formula for sigma scale is x minus mu whole scale into f of x into d of x and we take the integral here from minus infinity to plus infinity now in case of uh, discrete uh, random variable this is our function g of g of x then our e of g is equals to g of x into f of x so this is from i is equals to 0 to n and the same thing in case of uh, continuous uh, random variable This e of g will be equals to g of x times f of x into d of x, and we take the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity. Now, if you look on these formulas, the only difference coming here is when we have the discrete and we want to have the continuous, we just take the uh, integral. So I'm just writing it as a journal. Okay. So in order to convert from discrete to continuous, what we are doing, we are replacing this uh, summation with the integral side in general. Okay. But there may be some formula which will be different, so you need to be careful and you okay. Now I just discuss uh, the curve uh, or the shape in the PDF here and I would just want to discuss uh, a little bit more detail here. Okay, for example, this is my f of x and for example, I have a curve like this. And I have another curve, let's say, which is of the similar size as I draw earlier. Okay. Now this uh, thing is should go straight. Actually, this this thing is what we call as the mu. So, for example, if this this curve is based on my function f one. So I call it as a mu1. This curve, now this is the mean here, which is the mu2, let's say, and assuming this is for any other function of 2. So in this uh, diagram, you can see here, this uh, mu and mu2, mu1 and mu2, they are not equal, okay? So here in this mu1 and mu2 are not equal. But as I mentioned earlier when I was drawing this, for example, they have the same separate. So I can say that their sigma1 square value is equals to sigma, oh sorry, sigma2 square. Okay.
okay so my sigma one value for f1 is equals to my f sigma two scale so basically i can say that uh, this these two curves have the different mean value but their sigma scale or the variance is the same if you recall uh, from the definition basically so sigma is uh, measure of dispersion how much is the spread of your curves of scatter okay now there is one thing that we use it as a symmetric symmetric Now the symmetric means if I have let's say uh, this is my graph so by symmetric it means to say if this is my mean value here and I divide the area a and the b in the curve so if a and b are equally divided That's what we call this as a symmetric so in case of uh, in case of uh, symmetric pdfs probability density functions the distribution functions the mean value The mode and the median all of them are equal okay so how does it help if I ask you to find out the mean value of a symmetric PDF and I ask you the median as well so both of them will be the equal it is only applicable when you have a symmetric PDF Now let me give you an example where we have uh, the sigma higher one sigma is higher than the other so for example i have this uh, here and this is the curve bell curve and this is the mean value or the mu let's say this is my f1 f1 and for example i take another curve which has a totally different value of the sigma let's say i give it a name of f of 2 but it has the same mean okay so for both of the cum curve i have the same mean but in case of uh, f2 the value of my sigma 2 is higher than the value of my sigma 1 i'm just assuming it so i would say that if this is the case this means f of 2 of x is more exponential These are some of the properties uh, we will go in more details as we go into the course. Okay. Now, folks, when we are talking about uh, the PDFs, uh, in PDFs, There is a word that we use here, it's called as the moment. Moment. How we define that uh, moment of a function? Uh, 
R quantitative measures which are related to the shape. So, in particularly, in particularly, the nth moment of uh, f of x is defined as e of uh, x power n that is equals to x of n x power n into f of x into d of x so this should be integrated from minus infinity to plus infinity now zero moment of f of x is defined as uh, e x power zero which is equals to x power zero f of x into d of x and we integrate it from minus uh, infinity to plus infinity this is equals to f of x into d of x and we integrate it from minus infinity to plus infinity and if you remember this uh, this is always equals to 1 so we equate it as equals to 1 Now, in case of uh, first movement, in case of the first movement of f of x, we have e x power 1 that is equals to x into f of x into d of x. This is from minus infinity to plus infinity. Now, by definition, this thing we know this is equals to our mu. So that is equals to your mean value or expected value. So, what are the characteristics uh, for the PDF of bell curve here for this kind of the curve? where we have f of x and we have the x so we need to know the mean value and we need to know the sigma square value in order to define the pdf so these are the characteristics characteristics of our pdf okay now two more definitions uh, we need to discuss and then we can end this lecture one is called as the skewness skewness it is the measure of asymmetry
of a PDF. And what is a formula? It is noted by SK, skewness. And the formula we use is 1 over sigma q. We integrate uh, x minus mu q into f of x into d of x. This is from minus uh, infinity to plus infinity. Now, what is a skewness basically? So, this is the normal graph as I discussed here, which is a symmetric graph. By symmetry, it means to say this is the mean, which is equals to the median, and which is equals to the me, uh, mod. So, mean, median, and mod are the equal in a symmetry. But as I mentioned, this is for asymmetry. That means the curves of these A and the B will not be equally distributed. So there could be two possibilities. Okay. Now there is a possibility that your curve is something uh, like this. Let me draw it again. Okay, so there is a possibility your curve may be something like this. Or the second possibility could be your curve is something like this. Now in this curve, this uh, skewness value is greater than 0. That's because if this is my mean value here, the mean values uh, when we have a positive skewness, it lies uh, somewhere here. This is the mean and this is the median. This is my mod. Now, as you can see, this is going towards the positive axis. This is going towards the positive axis. So, if the tail is going towards the positive axis, we say that we have a positive skewness. Now, in this example, your tail is going towards the negative axis. So here we say that our skewness is negative or less than zero. In this case, this will be your mean, just like this mean is lying here. It is not that we are changing the axis, but this whole curve has been shifted towards the right. So this is my mean here, and this is my median, and this is my mode here so where the it is going towards the negative axis or the negative direction now another thing is called as the kurtosis k u r T O S I S. This is the formula for the kurtosis. It is 1 over sigma power 4 and integral from minus infinity to plus infinity x minus mu whole power 4 into f of x into d of x. So what is uh, this basically? It is just like your variance. It is the measure of dispersion.
of a PDF about mean value. Okay, so I will stop it here just for your practice at home. Uh, go to chapter 4. It is on page 97. Douglas and George book. And try to attempt uh, examples 1 to 8. Now just keep in mind when you are doing these examples, you might see the notations are different than what I am using. So there's no difference in the formula basically. Okay. Folks, if you have any question, you can ask me now, please. Okay. Folks, do you have any question for me? Okay, I'm going to unmute it. <laughs> Okay, so Slime is asking, we understand the mean and the average. How do we understand uh, the median and the mod in the real life problem? So the median is, uh, as, as I said, it's central value basically. And mod is something which is repeating. Just like uh, you have uh, uh, the highest value which is repeating in your data. Did you not mention how would you be possible to wait about 10 seconds after you finish writing a page before switching to the next? Sometimes I don't have time to write down the notes. Which, uh, because I'm going to share the le this lecture with you, so you don't need to worry if you miss something. The more important thing is you just understand. Okay, Don is asking that it's quite fast and did not get all the notes. It's possible to have a copy of the slide that you created. I will share the uh, lecture with you. Thank you for calling. The system shows that you were. Okay, folks, do you have any more question for me? You can please ask me or you can type in your questions here. Okay, so Seen is asking uh, when you are writing your notes, uh, is there any way you can show your previous uh, slide as well? In the case we are not done by the time you move on. Now there is only one way that I use, uh, instead of using the full screen, I use a small screen, but it will be hard to read for you. <laughs> Thank you. 
okay lenin is asking i did not attend your last two classes kindly share me your class schedule so we have classes running on uh, tuesday and thursday from 2 to 3:15 pm st john's time and if you are registered uh, in the class uh, you can access the class uh, lectures uh, last two lectures on the d12 Okay, Usman is asking. Could you please explain what's the practical use of these equations and the calculations? So, when you are solving the problems uh, related to the random variables, most of the applications, as I mentioned uh, in the first uh, class, those are related uh, to these two things. Either they could be continuous or discrete uh, random variables. So, there you apply all these techniques and. Uh, when we will study more about the distributions or the types of the distribution you will see most of the functions just like in the machine engineering or even in the chemical plant we see what kind of the trend they are following either the reactor or the condensers okay folks is there any more question for me Okay, I think you don't have any question for me. So what you do, I will upload uh, this uh, lecture on the D12, and you can just go through this. If you have missed any slide, uh, you can also note down uh, on your notes. Just leave a little bit space if I go to the next uh, slide. I have Usman is saying I have an issue with my audio. It does not connect uh, whenever it uh, gets disconnected. So Usman, this is the reason we are recording the lecture so that you can have it uh, after the class is done, or if there is any technical issue with your computer. Okay, folks. Uh, if you don't have any more question, I can let you go now. just work on those examples and the question problems i mentioned to you and if you have any questions you can always ask me on the email okay thank you very much everyone and have a good weekend